Hi everyone, this is Jonathan from j5music.com and in this video we're going to be looking at the new update from Electron for Syntact. So Syntact has received a uh, version 1.30 which has seen four new machines and the Euclidean sequencer along with other uh, fixes, bug fixes and other um, sort of additional features added. So we'll start off with the new machines. So the new machines are BD Acoustic, SD Acoustic, SY Chip and HH Lab, Hi-Hat Lab. Um, so the BD Acoustic and the Snare Drum Acoustic, they are available. So all these are basically analog machines. So BD Acoustic and SD Acoustic are available on track 9, 10 and 11. Whereas SY Chip is available on track 11 and the Hi-Hat Lab is available only on track 12. Um, we also have um, an added um, waveform for uh, DB Sharp. Um, but for this uh, example now, I'm just gonna go into BD Acoustic. So I'm just gonna run through each of the parameters within the actual BD Acoustic and so forth, so forth. So to access um, the BD Acoustic, we go onto track nine. We can then double tap on the synth page and then just head down. Now we'll see BD Acoustic there. So if we click on yes, this is what the original or the default sound sounds like. So very acoustic here, um, very nice sound. Um, and on these parameters, we have eight parameters that we can change and uh, swap them out and amongst, or we can randomize each parameter themselves. Um, so starting at the top left, we have tune. So the tune sets the pitch uh, in semitones of the oscillator. The S tim or the sweep time, this sets the pitch sweep time. The S depth, um, which is sweep depth, this sets the depth of the pitch sweep. The decay, this sets the length of the decay phase. Hold, this sets the length of the hold phase. Impact, this sets the level of um, digital transient. The transient consists of a mix of PCM and noise. And then the waveform, we have six waveforms to choose from. So we have sine, asymmetric sine, triangle. I think that's a sine tooth. And then we've got saw and then square. You'll notice as well, we have the little square at the start. That means uh, it'll be re-triggered from the zero point or the start of uh, each waveform. Whereas with it not having that square there, it will basically be triggered from wherever, giving a more analog feel to the kick. And then last is the overdrive. So the overdrive just is just overdrive. It just glues everything together. So we can also, we can tweak these parameters. To how we, we choose and we see fit. Or if we were a bit stuck in a rut um, and we wanted some quick inspiration, we can just hold the synth page down and press yes. What that does is it randomizes each of the parameters on there. So if we liked that, for example, we could just basically turn this tuning up a bit. A bit more. And then we can quickly adjust the um, randomized parameters to our own liking. So if we're happy with that, we can then move on to the next machine, which is SD Acoustic. So to get to SD Acoustic, what we will do is go click on track and then press number 10. So this is gonna be my, my um, snare track. We will do the exact same. It's already on there, but to get to that, we double tap on the synth menu and then we just go down using the up and down arrows down to SD Acoustic. And now we have the acoustic machine loaded up. So within this parameter, um, I'll just take you through what each one of the parameters does. So the tune in the top left, or macro A, um, this sets the tune in semitones of the oscillator. The N deck, the noise decay, this sets the length of the noise decay. The N level, this is the noise balance, so this sets the level of the noise. The decay of the body, this sets the length of the decay phase of the oscillator. Hold time, 
Hold time sets the length of the hold phase. Impact, this sets the level of the digital transient. The digital transient consists of PC, M and noise. The S depth is the sweep depth. This sets the depth of the pitch sweep and then overdrive. This sets the gain amount um, to the analog overdrive. So, So if we were a bit stuck in a rut again, we could just hold the synth page down and press yes. Come out with some nice textures for the synth. So we have the bass drum. And a nice crisp bit acoustic snare drum now next we'll look at um, the hi-hat lab so the hi-hat lab is on track 12 so if you haven't loaded it up so if you're on this for example we just do the exact same we just double tap on the uh, synth page and then go down to hi-hat lab this then takes us to this hi-hat lab so it's quite a metallic sort of sound so on this page, we have six oscillators, we have a decay and then overdrive. So these six oscillators sets the pitch of separate six oscillators, uh, which makes up the hi-hat sound. So if I turn these all to zero, we won't get really out. So I could choose as many uh, as up to six oscillators for the hi-hat sound. I don't have to choose them all. short decay we've got a nice hat so what i found as well with this is the more oscillators you add the more metallic it'll sound and obviously the higher the pitch up um, the more metallic it'll sound um, we can also randomize this as well to get different hat sounds out of it. If there's something that we'd like there, we could then save that as a preset. So if we like that sound, we could then save that sound into our bank and then recall it at a later date. Um, the only thing that the randomize button does there is just these oscillators. It doesn't do the decay or the overdrive. So with adding a bit of overdrive, you're getting a bit more grit in there. So that is a, a nice sort of addition to the syntax to have another hi-hat machine in there. There is a way that we can take the metallic sounds out of it, but we would need our DAW and to use the plugin um, for it. We don't really need to use the plugin, but there's a way that we can take the hi-hat sounds out and then resample them. So if you're using, let's say, the Digitact or an external sampler or even a, a sampler in your DAW, you could basically use that um, for there for that. Um, and it's just a way to take the metallic sounds out of that. It's, it removes the uh, the frequencies, the resonant frequencies within that sound. Next up, we have uh, a new synth, which is called SY Chip. So this um, chip uh, basically is, it's like an 80s sort of a vibe to this chip. It's like the, the chip tone sort of vibe, which I love, to be honest with you. And um, I'll just take you through each one of these, um, what they mean. So in the top left, we have tune. This is the, um, this sets the tune in semitones of the oscillator. The waveform, we have a variety of waveforms. So we have static waveforms, animated waveforms, um, table-based waveforms, and then we have pulse width, uh, or pulse wave it's called. So starting off with the waveforms, we have uh, so static waveforms. We have analog sine, asymmetric sine, triangle, sine saw, saw, and then square wave, which are all them there, square wave. And then we go over to uh, the SID style noise, uh, which is pitched. So it is pitched on the keyboard. Um, this is another way that you can get a mo another hi-hat sound out of 
your machine. So, for example, if you just shape your uh, amp envelope, um, the filter, you remove some of the lows, and then you can change the speed in hertz. You can get different um, sort of hi-hat sounds. So you can go further up. Or you can turn the pitch up. So you can get some nice sounds out of this. So next up you have animated waveforms. So anim one to four, that is a ring modulated um, variant. So if I just increase the decay, and just show you this. I'll just increase my hertz. So that's that one. That's like a square wave that goes into like a triangle wave. This is like a triangle wave. More brighter. And then we go to Anim 5. This is an, on, an alternating analog waveform. Um, so it's animated at the note speed. So whatever note you're playing, it's animated at that speed. So you're getting nice syncopated. You're getting nice syncopated stuff to whatever note is being played. So next up, we have the PWN Plus. This is a digital pulse wave um, animated note speed from 50%. So whatever the note speed, it would um, animate that waveform to 50% of what the note speed is. Um, we have, so on the next one, we have PWM minus. So this does it the opposite way. So it'll start from fast and then go to 10%. <laughs> So you can hear it stretching out. Then we are on to the uh, table-based uh, waveforms. So you have, I think it's five or six different types of these. Uh, the basically, it's the waveforms that we have here, but it has noise in and amongst the actual waveform. So for example, um, this first one is a triangle. So it has noise a short burst of noise and then it has the triangle so you can hear that that noise there and then that one is noise um which is a longer noise and then the triangle this one is uh, the triangle noise and then goes back to triangle this is the triangle and then a double whammy of noise and then back to triangle and then that goes throughout all of the waveforms. So then we head over to the TBL1, 2 and 3. So what these are is um, a combination of the waveform uh, and noise. So we can see that on the diagram, we have uh, obviously the noise, the waveform, the noise again, which sounds like that. So. So quite harsh, but that's what we can do from them. Um, and then going over to the uh, digital pulse wave. So now we actually have a pulse wave. If I just put that onto infinite. So what you could do with that is you could add an LFO onto that parameter to give it that modulation to for it to modulate itself. Um, what that would be nice with is a chorus, a nice chorus effect. Uh, but maybe that will come in another update. Next up is speed. So speed, this sets the rate of the internal uh, arpeggiator. Um, we have three different sections to it. So we have the actual note in divisions. Uh, so this is nice for keeping it nice and um, sort of in time with your actual uh, grid or your tempo, should I say. 
Um, then we have Hertz. So this is just a free form sort of Hertz. And then we have single shot mode, uh, and that is in Hertz as well. So single shot mode. Um, it just basically plays through the arpeggiator once, and then it just gives you a tune. Uh, whereas Hertz runs through and then obviously our note division keeps it in time with this tempo. Next up is the decay. This um, sets the length of the decay phase. Um, down here we have three um, OF uh, two to four. So these are offsets. Um, these are to do with your um, root note that you've set in the top left so of the oscillator. So it would go up in semitones, so three, seven, and then 10 semitones. If we kept them all on zero, um, you'll notice that they all get blanked out because that goes on to the next. So if I just did that as, as you would. So it's just like an arpeggiator. Or we can get a single, a single note. So by turning these off, we can basically just use the digital pulse wave um, for a waveform, basically. That's why it'd be nice if we could have a chorus in here um, to utilize some nice sort of, um, well, a chorus effect. So a nice sort of bass sound. And then last up, we have overdrive. So this is just, again, this uh, sets the gain amount into the uh, analog overdrive. And that is the SY chip, a new machine within the uh, Syntax, a really good machine. There's a lot to that um, got going on there. Um, so that is that. We will look at next um, at the added waveform uh, for DB sharp. So if I just click DB sharp on here, we obviously had the sine wave, the asymmetric sine, the triangle, the sine sawtooth thing, saw, and now we have square wave for them really harsh sounds, them harsh sort of. Um, so that's a nice little feature that they've added onto the BD sharp drum. Next, we'll have a look at the Euclidean sequencer. So on the uh, Euclidean sequencer or Euclidean sequencer, uh, they brought this from the uh, they brought this out originally on the Rhythm. Uh, then it got transposed into the Digitac Two, and now they've brought it to the Syntax with this latest update. Um, I have gone into depth on the uh, Euclidean sequencer in the Digitac Two video series. That is on uh, video three roughly about 32 minutes in so if you want to check that out um that does a more in-depth view of this so i'll just quickly skim over how you use it and how you can incorporate it within your uh, production itself so to actually use it we uh, select a track we go onto the usalidium page we then go into the grid record mode i'm just going to clear that whole sequence out so I have four pages now. I'm going to turn on the Euclidean mode, which is on. You'll see that it's gone blue. Um, and from that, I can start adding pulses wherever I want to, to add them. From there, um, I can rotate these pulses left or right. So we have two pulse generators. So if I just turn this one off, that's if I just come back to the first page. You'll see that on this, I have basically, if I just put that back to its own original place, um, it's generating these pulses amongst the 16 steps. I could then rotate these uh, pulses accordingly, so going left or right. That is per um, generator. So if I wanted to add another generator, you would see more steps appear. So one side is blue, the other side is yellow. And I could then do the exact same thing with that, 
moving left or right, or I could globally move the, all the steps over left or right. So what happens um, with generating these two um, steps is sometimes both steps will land on top of each other. So that's where this uh, gate comes in. So with boot operators are basically logic gates. Um, logic gates um, are basically uh, a logic gate. So if you had two inputs, it would have one output. That's what a logic gate is. Um, if you had a mixture between the two inputs, it would result in a different result on the output depending on the gate. Um, I won't go into too much depth on this, but we have different ones which gives you different sort of feel and vibes for the actual um, Euclidean sequencer that you've put in. So if I just play this now, we can get different vibes out of it. If we say we like that, we like that sequence, um, to print that onto the actual grid recording itself, we just hold function down and then we turn off the Euclidean mode that prints that onto the actual grid itself where we can then add swing. And then we can further develop more onto that. Um, so if I went into this, we could then add parameter locking and stuff like that, which will bring me on to the next little update that has been brought to the syntax. So on this um, sequencer, let's say I want to just change a few things over. Let's just do this pulse width modulation there. Let's go onto the filter page and then open that up a bit and then this amp page I'll add a bit of reverb there sort this out so now what you'll find when you're in grid record mode is that the parameter locks are uh, flashing red what we can do now is basically hold down on an actual trigger and you will see what parameter is uh, being affected by the actual step so as you can see here the synth page has, has come up red so that means that there's something on that page that has been altered within the sequence. Same with this one. And then this one, it shows you where exactly what you've changed. So if I just play this through. So let's say I didn't like the reverb on that. I'll know that that's where it is. I could either turn it off by just pushing down on the encoder and then just leave it like that. Bring back in the bass drum. So that's just a nice little feature uh, that speeds up your workflow within the uh, grid recording just to really hone in on where it is you've actually, what you've actually uh, messed about with. The other thing as well um, that they brought into this is a, a loop mode. So loop mode is if you hold the page button down and you have obviously these four pages lit up, you can basically create a loop between page one and three, for example. So if I just select page one and three, as it's going through the sequence, it will only, pay, it will only play page one and three. So you'll see these lights flash up here. So it'll go between one and three constantly. Um, or you could have one, two, and three. And you'll notice as well that as it's playing through, it will play the last step, but on the first step, and then it will start again on the first step. So it will play one to one, two to two, three to three, and then it'll go to one to one, and then it'll go back again. So it'll play it through in its order. So you're not getting any polyrhythms unless you change that within the actual pattern itself. So you could have all them fall lit up, 
that will just be playing through the whole sequence I can just turn it off we can also now in the LFO mode we can also if I just go to the so I'll go to tune and then if I go over to the random waveform this uh, start phase now acts as a slew so a slew uh, means it it glides between the uh, waveform type I'll just show you I'll just do that so you see it's quite harsh in in moving between the different um, sort of waveform types but if I bring this up it's acting like a glide between the different pitches So that's another feature that has been added to the LFOs, which is a nice feature because it's I like the uh, the slew mode on that. You can get some nice gliding textures going on. And then the last major sort of thing is um, we can now, if we rename something, we can now uh, just press on the settings and this gives us basically a randomized name for whatever it is uh, that we're doing. So on this pattern name, if I just press randomize, uh, taxing tango, that's what it's come up with. So I can then press yes, and then that's what it would be. So in this uh, example, I'd like to show you how we can um, take the harshness out of the hi-hat lab um, and any other sort of symbols that have harsh frequencies in there. Um, so what I've got is I've got the overbridge set up, I've got my syntax connected to my computer. So after the overbridge, I've basically put in Sooth2. So Sooth2 um, is a really good plugin for taking harshness uh, out of um, your basically your signal chain. Um, you can do this um, by just placing it after and then messing around with the settings. So these are the settings that I have come up with for this um so this is it before so quite harsh so if I bring this in now you see it just takes that harshness out um, you can put this into depth to, to your own liking so about there subtle you start to hear the difference about two three three maybe Starting to work there. Still a bit harsh though. I quite like it on that one. So what you could do after that is you could set up an audio track. So here I have track six that has been set up. Uh, the input is from Syntax, which is on track one. And then it is post, uh, I'm gonna put it on post effects. So anything after the effects chain will be recorded. I will then click on the record. Just make sure that all these channels are muted. And um, basically press record. And then now that is recorded into my DAW. And um, I'll just increase the volume a bit. Zoom in down here. Set that to 1-1, one, one, which is the start of the sample come back up, shorten this length down, then I will crop it, bring that back down to its normal value. And then that can be used then in um, another uh, sort of form. So you could export that out to your Digitat or you could use it within Ableton itself. So Ableton has just got a nice new update where we've got a drum sampler. So if I just put this drum sampler in there, drag and dropped that file into this. Now, when I play, if I just increase the gain a bit, I could then mess about, get completely different textures out of
create completely different textures out of it um, and then export them out into Medigitact or where, whatever it is that you have. So just a nice way to basically get more sounds out of the actual um, syntax itself. I do just want to um, show you what it would be like if we had a chorus on this. So I'm just going to load up the stock chorus. Let's just play it in the lower octave. Compared to... So that is what it would sound like if it had a chorus on this device. Um, and then linked. So if you linked this with your Digitact, what would be good as well uh, would be uh, the sample rate reduction and bit rate reduction as well. Because what I've noticed on the Digitact is a bit of sample rate reduction, you can get some more nice sounds like your hi-hats, really nice sounds like your hi-hats. Um, so that harshness of the uh, metallic sort of sounding sounds might tame it down a bit with adding a bit of bit crush or sample rate reduction to it so if you're wanting that lo-fi feel you've got that within this box itself so i think um the next effects they should add would be um the sample rate reduction the bit rate reduction probably a different type though a different sort of vibe a, a probably a new one i don't know how they do that um but a different sort of algorithm um i don't know um, and then the chorus, obviously, for the bass. So let me know what you think, uh, how you're getting on with version 1.3. Um, what do you think they need to add to it now in the next? I know we've just got an update, but what do you think could be added to make this even more of a unit itself? Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, that's it for this video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, comment um, your questions about it. Let me know what you think about this update. And yeah, I will see you in the next one.